I decided to put the recipe in the book because it's an Adelaide thing. When you say a pie floater, people from Sydney kind of get it, but they think they own it. <laughs> we own it. Yeah. In Adelaide. I normally get the pea soup sort of going first. It would normally have a blue boiler, um, but I'm, I'm going fresh peas, shallots, garlic. So the peas are just talking now. The process is really, really simple. This is a mushroom paste, and most people would refer that, to that as a truffle paste. I like to mirror flavours all the way through the dish. You know, shallot and garlic for sweetness. Cooked it, cooked it all down with a little bit of seps, dried porcini, and then hit it with a whole heap of aged red vinegar. It's about half a cup of cream in the mushroom paste and reduced down, and you, you're starting to see something quite meaty already. And then we're gonna do something that actually sounds really weird, make a custard. And I need, unfortunately, about for that much, or one and a half eggs. Give them a quick whisk. About a quarter of a cup of milk. I'm not trying to do a faux meat here. That's not the idea at all. I, I want just a really lush um, flavour. And mushrooms are one of my favourite flavours. I've done a rough puff to get a really good flaky pie. Um, and I'm just doing little ones because they're so rich. And it's not a hard dish to do. So I'm going to pop that in the oven and then I just got one more job to do, maybe 180 for 10 or 15 minutes. This is where the dish gets interesting that, you know, tomato sauce really is just a clever balance between sugars and acids. There's a lot of acid in the tomato, there's natural MSG. A little bit of ginger, garlic, onion, and then pushing a little bit of brown sugar in to exploit the, the caramelization, and then orange zest because it, the essential oils in the orange just brighten up the sauce. Um, and then really it's just a lot of vinegar put in until it's cooked down to an absolute mush. And if you taste that vinegar, you'll get <coughs> a pop through your nose, but it's mellow and quite balanced. No one can say I didn't put a, a, a blue boiler pea in because I've got pea shoots on top. I look at the pie cuts is a little bit like Asian hawker food, that they probably didn't have a ton of fridges and stuff, so it had to be fresh. They're kind of wobbling, but honestly, they'll get there under their own steam. The soup, that, that's fine, doesn't have to be piping hot. It's spring, and it still held its colour, but I'll show you something a little interesting in a minute. People spend an hour plating a meal to make it look like they were nonchalant about it. Just put it on, put it on the bloody plate. The less fiddling you do, the better. So they probably need to cool a little bit. I'm being a little bit brave here. We probably only need one for the money shot, don't we? Oh, looks like we might be able to get two up and the other one will release itself later. A dob of the tomato. Mint and peas is a no-brainer, so if you wanted to put mint on, that'd be good. And a little bit of extra vinegar, and it will discolour the pea a little, but that's all part of it. And I actually love these little lentil shoots. They're herbaceous, they're, they're, they're really nice. So it's not just fluff. That's pretty much it, except for I wouldn't mind an extra bit of white pepper. So that's about the end of the deal, I reckon. You fellas want a taste? Oh, of course. Probably forgotten the beer. <laughs> Cheers. Thank Cheers, you. fellas. Cheers. Thank you very much. That looks absolutely superb. Mine's a bit mushier than yours. As in, see how the, the center's not quite set? Yeah, it's good though. It was good food, and I think it's an important part of our culture, and I hope it isn't lost. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's not overly sentimental, it's just good food. Yeah.